Uh, hello, everybody, and we're back on Evolving Technology Track. Um, I'd like to welcome Eduardo Vaki, right? Did I pronounce it correct? That's correct. Thank you. <laughs> hello. Um, he will be talking today about Dr. Fut Fut uh, Futamura's projection machine. Uh, Eduardo, yeah. the stage is all yours. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining. This is Dr. Futamura's projection machine from interpreters to compilers through a marvelous device. My name is Eduardo Vakim. I'm a senior software engineer at Reddit, and I work at Business Automation. Uh, this is the project I'm currently working on. It's called Cogito. It, uh, I work on rules, JBPM. It's our business automation platform, but for the cloud, it's based on Quercus to provide um, Incredible capabilities, including native image compilation, which is supported by GraalVM. It's a, it's based on GraalVM, which is the topic for today. But today we're not going to talk about uh, native image compilation, native image generation, but we're going to talk about uh, one of the uh, projects that are part of the umbrella that GraalVM is. GraalVM uh, includes an OpenJDK compiler. But it also include it allows you to compile your programs into a native image standalone uh, executable. But it also allow you allows you to run multiple dynamic languages, and uh, such as JavaScript, Ruby, R, Python, and even managed uh, native, uh, native 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 languages. Now the way it does that is through a framework. It's through a framework that's called Truffle. This framework allows you to define this dynamic language in a very uh, high level way and still get incredible performance. You, as you can see from this slide, which is quite old, but uh, still impressive, you were able to write, uh, they, would, they were able to write a Ruby implementation, a very high level way, which is, was, was far four times faster than the traditional M Ruby implementation. R implementation were 4.5 times faster than R. Um, and JavaScript implementation that was basically on par with, with V8. So this presentation was originally for a meetup uh, that's called Papers We Love, where we started our journey by uh, taking a look at papers. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bore you. Uh, I'm not gonna uh, talk and read papers in this presentation, but I just want to give you a couple of, I a couple of information about where, where this uh, this uh, projection machine. Uh, comes into play for GraalVM. So um, this is a paper, a location removal by partial evaluation, where partial evaluation is first, first um, mentioned, and it talks about this uh, truffle framework, which is part, again, of the GraalVM umbrella. And um, this is where uh, partial evaluation is being mentioned. Now, uh, this is another paper, more recent paper with much more details. And again, partial evaluation, as you can see here, is the is the keyword. Uh, in this, in the abstract of this paper, you can read that uh, an introduction that uh, the problem with dynamic languages is that uh, dynamic language implementers tend to um, implement duplicate the semantics of their language in multiple places, in the interpreter, in the compiler, and even in the runtime system. So you start with an interpreter usually, usually but then you understand understand that you want more performance. Then you write a just-in-time compiler. And then you will have to duplicate the semantics over and over again. So with GraalVM Truffle, you are able to write an interpreter and just use that. Mm -hmm. And by using that, you will get um, you will get high performance just as time compiler. And this is true, the magic, so to speak, of partial evaluation. Um, uh, th this approach was first uh, mentioned uh, and, uh, and described in 1971 by uh, Futamura. And uh, uh, the, the, the technique, one of the techniques is called first Futamura projection. And that's why we're going to talk about uh, the first, the second, the third uh, Futamura projection. Uh, the paper from which I'm taking uh, the details is from 1983. And uh, basically, the technique uh, of Futamura projections gives you the ability to start from an interpreter and get a compiler for free. And the reason why I'm saying compiler for free, and this 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 presentation is basically a shameless ripoff of this other presentation. I'm just kidding, but I take a lot of inspiration from RubyConf 2013 compilers for free by Tom Stewart. Check it out and see how much stuff I copied from him. <laughs> so this is the the abstract from the 1983 paper. And uh, but we're not gonna bother too much with that. Um, let's get into the details of what this is about. So let's get a step back and understand what a program a programming language is. Let's just uh, you know uh, take back, uh, re 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 give, give back some 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 definition that we probably already know. 
So what's a program? <clears throat> a program is a sequence of instruction that can be executed by a machine. And the machine could be virtual or physical. Now, the collection of these sequence uh, of these uh, instructions, it's a, it's a programming language, basically. Now, when we say that a program is evaluated, we mean that there's some machine, be it virtual or, or physical, that is able to read these instructions and, and evaluate them. Now, the, the key here is that it is a machine. What that means is that there's no uh, intelligence. There's no, it's not smart. It just reads an instruction and just do whatever it does, the, the instruction is supposed to do. So what's a program evaluation then? If you have a program written in some language, let's say a Python program, and you have some data, you feed the data into the program and you get back the result. That's what a program evaluation is. So for instance, suppose you have a program that computes the sum between two numbers, your program is k plus u, and your result is seven, and your data is three and four. That's it. Now, What's an interpreter? Well, an interpreter is a special kind of program. Uh, and it's a special kind of program that takes as an argument uh, another program and then the data for that program. So for instance, if I, it's our Python interpreter, then P would be our Python program. And it takes as, a, as an argument the Python, pro the Python program, the data for the Python program, it gives you back the results for that program P. And we could denote this with IPD. So we take the interpreter, we supply the, pro the program P and the data D, and we get back the result. That's it. So what's a com um, and that's and that's uh, we're going to see what a compiler is, but that's what an interpreter may look like in a very high level way. Um, uh, as we said, an interpreter has an internal representation, some instructions for your program, and what uh, and what uh, what the interpreter does is fetching, reading these instructions one by one, um, analyzing them against the list of instruction that it has, uh, and, and and perform the the, the operation that 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 instruction um, implements, represents. So in this case, it will be K plus U, it will be the instruction add, and this will be the way uh, it, will, uh, it would execute that. Now, what about compilers? Well, compilers are a special kind of program. Again, uh, a compiler for, the, for, for a programming language takes that program, that, uh, a program written for that programming language, and it turns it into a compiled program. Now, the originating program we usually call the source program, and the compiled program we sometimes call the object program, at least traditionally it's called an object program. Now, uh, the, 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 the result of computing the compiler, of applying the compiler over the program P, it's uh, the compiled program CP. Now, the key here is that now you can evaluate D, um, you, you can evaluate the program, the compiled program with the data D and you get the result. And we could denote, it, denote this with CPD, okay? And that's what a compiled program for the sum would look like. This is a x86 assembly. Now, there's no particular intrinsic reason why uh, a language should be compiled or interpreted. And in fact, there are many programming languages that can be both interpreted and compiled. This, for instance, is a camel. This is a simple camel program that prints a string. You could run the program or compile it and then run it. And basically, you could do this, at least theoretically, for any programming language. So basically, as long as the semantics is preserved, that is, as long as applying uh, the program to the data gives you back the same result, so you interpret the, the program over the data, or you compile the program and then apply to the data the result, you should get the same uh, results for, for that program. The semantics should be preserved. So what's partial evaluation? Well, partial evaluation uh, as an intuition, if you have a program F with two parameters K and U, suppose that you want to, um, you want to uh, often call this program with a K parameter bound to the, to the value five. So the idea, you will define a new function F5 that only takes one parameter U, and basically the, the, the implementation for the function will be substituting five for every occurrence of K and then simplifying the function. So basically partial evaluation is the process of transforming F of five U into F five of U. And this is how this is represented in the original Shitamura paper. This is the original function. This is the process through, we, through which uh, you partially evaluate and you get this intermediate problem FK. Now, this could sound to you like curving, or to be more precise, it should be called partial application. So you define a function f5 in terms of f. Um, so uh, if you want to look at, at the code there, which kind of looks like JavaScript code, um, you're basically using the function f, and you're defining a new function f5 by uh, defining a new function that only takes the parameters u and calls 5f with a 5 as, as a key value, and u 
as 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 the second parameter, right? And, and functional programming, this is often called uh, for mis misnamed uh, currying is actually partial partial application, but this is not the same as partial evaluation. And in fact, the difference is that here we're just calling another function. What's what's that? What's partial evaluation is is that the function is actually transformed. So you start from the originated function at the top, which is a k times k times k so place plus one da 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 da. Um, you 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 set k to five. You substitute uh, five for k everywhere, and then you apply all the uh, operations up until you cannot simplify it any longer. Basically, you see uh, there's only five times 31 plus u plus u times u. As you can see, cannot be long, uh, can be no further simplified. It's a different function, but it computes the same results. So, so this has been partially evaluated. Another technique to do partial evaluation is rewriting. So suppose we have this recursive definition for the power function that takes n and the, and the k uh, exponent. So uh, if k is less or equal to zero, it returns one. Otherwise, it n times power n k minus one. So we substitute uh, the definition of power five, uh, power five which is power n five, uh, with a, with a basically uh, the the else branch here because five is is, is greater than zero and it becomes four and then three and then two up until it's all expanded all in line n time n, n times n times n times n five times. This is sometimes called inlining by compilers. Okay, and these techniques are even. Uh, in the 80s, they were already pretty familiar to compiler writers. This is a, a, a screenshot from the paper, a picture from the paper where uh, PL1 program, very old programming language, were, uh, were using uh, integration simplification. The compiler was using integration, which is another name for writing, and simplification to uh, recompile and, uh, and optimize uh, the, 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 the program, right? So what's a projection? Well, uh, the projection is the name that we give to the function fk. So uh, uh, the function f with a k parameter fixed, it's called a projection of f at k, just the definition, OK? So what's a partial evaluator? Now we're ready to know what a partial evaluator is or a projection machine, or, or also called a partial computer. It's a function. It's a program, right, um, that takes another program, f, and a parameter for that program, k, and gives you back the projection of f at k. So for instance, if we have this function f, we have k and u as the parameters. If I were running examples, uh, and it gives you as a result, the, the results of applying f to k and u, we could take f and k, we could apply alpha to it, and we will get back uh, the projection of f of k. So um, for in, and because alpha is a program, basically what, what that means is that um, in the case of our power five function, if we had this partial evaluator uh, at disposal, we could write alpha, pow, which is our power function, and the binder of k to five, and get back as a result automatically this um, expanded, this rewritten implementation for free, right? Okay. Um, so the paper actually presents various use cases for partial evaluator, but the one that's most interesting to me and the one we, we're going to see today is automatically generating a compiler. So. Uh, let's get back to, to this. So an interpreter is a program, program that takes another program written for that interpreter and the data for that program is an input. It evaluates the program and gives you back the result. A compiler is another program that takes another that program, which is a source program, and returns an object program. And the object program is applied to the, gate, to the data and gives you back the result. Now, suppose that we are, are in this situation. It's our interpreter that takes a program and the data for that program gives you back the results. For instance, suppose I, it's Python, and P, it's the Python program. So because I, it's a program, um, actually, we could we could apply the, the, the partial evaluator, the projection machine, and get the projection of I at P. Right? We could apply uh, we could apply to the Python interpreter and the Python program and get back uh, 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 projection of I at P projection of the Python interpreter or the Python program. What does that mean? Well, let's see what this does. Basically, it's a new program that by being supplied the data for the original program, the original Python program, gives you back the result. So. Basically, this is a program that can be run and being fed with the data gives you better results. So that's basically an object program, which means it's, an, it's a compiled program. Whoa. 
I believe I, I don't think we're gonna believe me here. I think you're gonna say, oh, well, that's like bundling the Python interpreter with a Python program. Well, not quite. Uh, because partial evaluation, as, as we've seen previously, simplifies, transform your 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 program and rewrites it. And so suppose that this is our program, K plus U, which is transformed into the instruction add X, Y so to speak, right? This is our uh, instruction. This is our interpreter, which fetches instruction and, and matches them against the least of possible instruction. But our program only contains one instruction. So all of this stuff and only one line. So all of this stuff, the while loop, uh, the match against different kind of instructions is useless. And so it gets simplified because it's never, it's never evaluated. It gets simplified to this one simple state uh, list of statements. But actually, this is a very high level definition as a pseudocode. If we imagine that this was compiled using uh, compiler to, to native code, basically this reduces to this, which is again, our assembly, our uh, representation uh, machine code for x86, right? So this is our uh, current situation. We took our interpreter, we took our program, we have a Python interpreter, Python program, and uh, partial evaluator for, uh, and we got the IP, which is a uh, projection IP, which is a compiled pro, uh, a compiled program, basically, right? Let's rewrite it in a different way. So it's still the same thing, but uh, written on the on the you know with our head tilted on the side. Um, alpha, it's uh, the center, it's the program that we evaluate. It's being evaluated over I, which is our Python interpreter, and P is our Python program. And it gives you back the I, I proje uh, projection IP, which is our com comp compiled program, right? Now, suppose that now, because alpha, it's a program, right? This is the beginning, uh, uh, we say this, uh, alpha, it's a program. So we can actually partially apply alpha to i, and we get the projection of alpha to i, right? The projection of alpha at Python interpreter. What does that mean? Well, um, let's see what this does. Uh, alpha, projection of alpha at i takes p and gives you back ip, the projection of i at p. But what's the projection of i at p? Well, if you recall, that's a compiled program, right? So what's called what's 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 called what what is a program that takes a program and gives you back a compiled program? Well, that's that's a compiler, right? So we're we're getting a compiler for Python by applying partial evaluation twice. That's pretty cool, but we need to go deeper, right? So this is our current situation. We have alpha, we have i, we have partially apply alpha to i, and we get alpha i, which is a compiler for Python, right? So let's rewrite it, tilting to the side. Let's rewrite it, and then we have this situation, still the same situation, alpha, alpha, i as the parameters, and we get alpha i, which is a compiler, right? But alpha, it's still a program, right? So we can actually apply partial evaluation to some of its parameters, let's say alpha. So uh, by applying alpha to alpha and alpha, we get alpha alpha, the projection of alpha at alpha. So what does that mean? Well, let's see what that does. Well, the projection of alpha at alpha takes i and gives you back alpha i, which is c, which is a compiler. So this is a program that takes an interpreter for some language, for instance, Python, and gives you back alpha i, which is the projection of alpha at i, which is a compiler. So by giving a high level specification in some way of a language in the form of an interpreter, you get a compiler. So that's alpha alpha, it's a compiler compiler. So that's a compiler generator. That's pretty cool. Okay, but uh, can, we, can we go further than that? Well, kinda. So we are in this situation, right? We were in this situation, we applied alpha, we got alpha, alpha, let's rewrite it. So we now have this situation. We have alpha, alpha, alpha as a program, and we get as a result alpha, alpha. Now, if we apply again partial evaluation to alpha and alpha, we're gonna get again alpha, alpha. So that's kind of a quine, it's a, it's a program. You, you cannot go further than that, it's a, it's a fixed point, no? Um, so let's. This is the fourth equation of partial computation. The first, the, the first three were called the first, second, third equations, or first, second, third uh, projections. Uh, this is the fourth equation of partial computation. Let's see what that means. Alpha, alpha, alpha gives you alpha, alpha. <laughs> so, um, because I, I is an interpreter. Um, 
And uh, alpha alpha apply to i gives you a compiler for the language uh, interpreter i. Uh, then basically, um, alpha alpha gives you, uh, can, can be applied to any program. So what does it really do? When you apply alpha alpha to i, it gives you back a compiler for i. When you apply alpha alpha to i and then apply to p, it gives you a compiler to p. But i could be any program, could be any interpreter. So what is exactly alpha alpha? Well, um, alpha alpha, if you want to see it differently, if you see the, the comparison with, uh, with the equation at the top, with the, with the equation on the second line, um, alpha, it's kind of a language. You know, if I, it's a, it's a language interpreter, alpha, it's an interpreter for the alpha language. And that's what's written in the, in the paper. What that means is that uh, you can, you can say that alpha, alpha, it's a, it's a partial evaluation compiler. It's a compiler for the alpha language, which means that basically because alpha here can be substituted by any program. So it could be alpha. It could be I, it could be any program. Basically, you are able to generate a partial evaluator for any program. Now, um, the author says that there's no practical derivation for this program. So that's just, uh, you know, theoretical. But the rest can be actually applied. And in fact, the first and second projections are using GraalVM, as we mentioned at the beginning. Um, the interesting thing about this, uh, about the technique that the GraalVM uh, team uses is that uh, they do not just use partial evaluation because uh, besides rewriting and, uh, and, substitu and, and substitution, um, there's also... Um, the, the, there's also another technique uh, that, that's called tabulation that could lead to an explosion in generated code. So instead of just compiling every possible code path, they use uh, they use uh, they, they, they use uh, profiling feedback to only compile those code paths that are actually used. So you use a high level representation of your program as a tree, an AST absorb syntax tree based interpreter. These are rewritten re using profiling feedback. And when there's a hot pot, they're actually rewritten using, they're actually partially evaluating into compile code. And you can go back and forth depending on uh, the, the, the code path that's being visited. And that's how they get this amazing performance. So that was basically all I had. Um, these are all the references to this uh, presentation. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you were able to follow. I hope uh, that you were happy to stay with me.